Season three continues with the second game of our qualifying rounds. Who moves on today? Will it be the witches from Brewer High School? <laughs> or the yachtsmen from Falmouth High School? Find out next on High School Quiz Show, Maine. Production support for High School Quiz Show, Maine is provided by the Helen and George Ladd Charitable Corporation, the Lincoln and Therese Filene Foundation, Plotz Associates, Bernstein Schur, and by Take a moment and change your life. Join a Maine credit union. At a credit union, you're an owner, and a credit union gives back to its owners. Contact your local Maine credit union. It's your moment. Own it. Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility part of your community. With Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, you get more than a health plan. You get a partner. With benefits built around local needs, they're helping communities across Maine get healthier and happier. Visit harvardpilgrim.org to learn more. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to High School Quiz Show, Maine. I'm Shannon Moss. Season three continues as we start whittling 16 teams down to one champion who will take home the $1,000 prize for their school's project graduation and move on to compete in the High School Quiz Show Invitational against the champions of WGBH Boston's High School Quiz Show, Rhode Island PBS's High School Quiz Show Rhode Island, and New Hampshire PBS's Granite State Challenge. Today's matchup features a veteran team Team taking on a newcomer. This is Falmouth's third season on the quiz show. Last year they made it to the state finals but lost to Bangor. I'm sure they hope to do even better this season, but they must get past Brewer in their first appearance on the show, who I'm sure would love to win it all in their very first time out. So before we get going, we'd like to introduce everyone, of course. So for Falmouth, we have Ben, Kerry, Wade, Emma, with alternate John, and they are coached by Mike Casey. And for Brewer, it is Ryan, Lana, Lauren, and Andrew, and they are coached by Sue Ann Gatings and Andrea Martin. And we also have a couple of judges with us today, Angela Absher and also Stephen Ferran, so we welcome them. Our competition has four rounds. We have the toss-up, a head-to-head, -head, a category round, and a lightning round. So we're gonna start with the toss-up round. All answers are worth 10 points, and this is the only round where no point deductions will be taken for wrong answers. Players must wait for me to complete the question. If one team answers incorrectly, the other team will get a chance to answer. All right, you guys ready? Let's get this started. What is the only U.S. state whose land area is increasing from volcanic eruptions? Ben. Hawaii. That's the right answer. Upon signing the 13th Amendment, what U.S. president formally abolished slavery? Ryan. Abraham Lincoln. That's the right answer. What word that begins with the letter M is the medical term for nearsighted vision? It's myopic the answer. In a story from Aesop's Fables, what Greek slave pulls a thorn from the foot of a lion? Androcles is the answer. An amoeba has no fixed shape and is composed of how many cells? Lana. One. That's correct. In 1541, Spanish conquistador Hernando de Soto became the first documented European to discover what North American river? Ben. The Mississippi. That's the right answer. What character has author J.K. Rowling described as an exaggeration of how I was when I was younger? Ryan. Harry Potter. That is incorrect. Falmouth. Carrie. 
Hermione Granger. That is that is correct. What major shipbuilding center was the second city ever to be devastated by an atomic bomb? Ben. Nagasaki. That's the right answer. And we have a video question if you want to take a look at your monitor. My name is Kurt Spiridakis, and I'm the boat builder at the Maine Maritime Museum. During World War II, this Midcoast shipyard delivered more destroyers than any other U.S. shipyard, and more than the shipyards of Japan and Germany. What is the name of this now iconic shipyard? Ben. Bath Ironwork. That's the answer. In human anatomy, what part of the respiratory system is also known as the windpipe? Ryan. Trachea. That's correct. Sometimes called the East Coast's Main Street, what important highway running from Maine to Florida passes through more states than any other? Lauren. Highway 95. That's right. On August 28th, 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech from the steps of what Washington, D.C. monument? Ryan. Lincoln. That's correct. Buddhism, which spread across Asia via trade routes such as the Silk Road, originated in what country? Wade. China. That is incorrect. Brewer? India. India is the right answer. All right, we have a math question for you. If two angles of a triangle measure 40 degrees and 70 degrees, what is the measure of the third angle? Wade. 70 degrees. That's the right answer. After carbon dioxide, which is the second most prevalent greenhouse gas emitted in the United States from human activities? Ben. Methane. You got it. Which of the following countries extends the farthest north? Is it Finland, Estonia, or Latvia? Ryan. Finland. That is correct. In George Orwell's Animal Farm, what treacherous and tyrannical pig is based on Joseph Stalin? Kerry. Napoleon. That's right. On April 30th, 1975, North Vietnamese troops captured Saigon and the city was subsequently renamed what? Wade. Ho Chi Minh City. That's correct. All right, if you take a look at your monitor, we have a picture question for you. Name this mid-19th century author, naturalist, and philosopher from Massachusetts who penned such literary works as The Maine Woods, Walden, and Civil Disobedience. Ryan. Henry David Thoreau. Correct. The story of the Trojan horse is mentioned in Homer's Odyssey and in what epic poem by Virgil? Ryan. The Aeneid. Correct. The Gospel of Wealth, an article about the importance of philanthropy, was written in 1889 by what U.S. steel magnate? Ben. Carnegie. Correct. Often called the theory of everything in the 1970s, what name was given to the theory that all objects in our universe are composed of vibrating filaments and membranes? Ben. Quantum mechanics. That is incorrect. Or? String theory. That's correct. Who was the first incumbent U.S. president who did not win a second term? Emma. Um, George H.W. Bush. That is incorrect. Brewer. Want to take a shot at it? John Adams is the answer. We have a math question. What is five to the fourth power divided by five squared? Wade. 25. That's the right answer. Characteristic of the American West and Southwest, what flat-topped mountain or hill is named after the Spanish word for table? Andrew. Plateau. That is incorrect. Falmouth? Mesa. Wade. Mesa. Correct. In exercise physiology, catabolic refers to muscle breakdown. What term refers to muscle buildup? Ryan. Anabolic. That is right. Which of the following countries is landlocked? North Korea, Nigeria, or Nepal? Ryan. Nigeria. That is incorrect. Falmouth? Ben. Nepal. That is right. The fastest smartphones work on a 4G network. What does the G stand for? You just in time, Ryan. Generation. That's right. While recovering from back surgery in 1954, JFK worked on what Pulitzer Prize winning book about great American political leaders? <coughs> Profiles in Courage is the answer. What long running and extremely popular theatrical show was started in 1994 by Irish dancing champions Michael Flatley and Gene Butler? Emma. River dancing. That's right. Since 1845, what two schools have competed in the annual university boat race, a course that spans approximately four miles along the Thames River? 
Ben. Oxford and Cambridge. That's right. What country occupies about half the landmass of South America? Ben. Brazil. That's the right answer. And that is the buzzer. So that signals the end of our first round. And let's take a look at the scores. Falmouth with 160 points. Brewer with 120 points. What a great start to this game. It's, it's going to be a good one. All right. We're going to meet our players. And we're going to go head to head when we come back. Our head-to-head -head round is coming up next, but before that, we have a special question for each one of our players. We just like to get to know them a little bit. So here is my question. How much money would you have to be paid to completely give up the use of a phone or a computer for a month? Ben, we'll start with you. Uh, you know, no amount of money is worth missing out <laughs> on the latest bop from Ariana Grande. Thank you, next is a jam. <laughs> I don't know how we go on from there. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Carrie. Mine would probably be about $500 because I probably could live without it, but it's kind of difficult for me or any other Gen Z person. Sure, 500 then you know, go shopping, right? Exactly. Absolutely. Buy a new phone. Buy a new phone. <laughs> I love it. All right, Wade, what about you? $50, not a huge yeah. deal. Okay, I like it. Simple man. All right, <laughs> Emma? I'd say $10, also not a huge deal. Very, I like to hear that. Ryan, what about you? Uh, I'd say about $100. Um, I mean, it's not a huge deal for me, but I'd, I'd like to get a little bit of money out of it. So. Right, why not, yeah. right? I mean, if someone's asking. Yeah, right? of course. <laughs> Lana? Uh, probably about three, $400, because I think I'd have trouble living without music, because that's where I listen to most of my music ah, on. Very good point. All right, Lauren, what about you? Probably enough to buy a GPS, because without my phone GPS, I would get very lost. <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer. And Andrew? Uh, Four or five hundred dollars because it is a nice way to stay in touch with friends, but it's not necessary. Okay. All right. Nice job, guys. Nice to get to know you a little bit, too. All right. Well, good luck to all of you because we are going to bring the teams down for the very exciting head-to-head -head round. But first, we want to see how well you do with the Maine's Credit Union's Question of the Week. Hi. I'm Jake Holmes, and this is the Maine's Credit Union's Question of the Week. Several U.S. coins have ridges around their edges. How many ridges does the edge of a quarter have? Is it 0, 75, or 119? Check your pockets and get counting. We'll have the answer later in the show. We are about to go head to head. We have Brewer to my left and Falmouth to my right. Gentlemen, want to shake hands? To get started, there we go. In this round, you get 10 points for correct answers. Incorrect answers will cost you 10 points. Now, you don't need to wait for me to finish the question before you buzz in. You guys ready? Put 90 seconds on that clock, and here we go. What British author called his character, David Copperfield, his favorite child? Falmouth. Dickens. That's correct. The sun primarily makes energy by fusing hydrogen into what gas? Falmouth. Helium. That's right. Graceland Mansion, Elvis Presley's former home, is located in what U.S. city? Uh. Memphis. Revered for her work with the poor in India, what nun was declared a saint by Pope? Oh, yes, Brewer. Sorry. That's correct. In 1783, Great Britain recognized America's independence under what treaty? Uh. Treaty of Paris. What Arctic marine mammal with a single tusk is sometimes called the unicorn? Yes, narwhal. narwhal. That's right. In 1804, what two American explorers began a two and a half year expedition called the Corps of Discovery? Yes, Falmouth. Lewis and Clark. That's right. Zambia was once called Northern Rhodesia. What neighboring country was once called Southern Rhodesia? Zimbabwe. That's right, Brewer. Mark Twain's novel, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, is set in a fictional town in what U.S. state? Mississippi? Uh, that's incorrect, it's Missouri. A fraction is made up of two numbers. The bottom number is called the denominator. Yes, Brewer. Numerator? That's correct. What Scottish bacterialist is best known for his discovery of penicillin in 1928? Uh. Alexander Fleming is the answer. Auckland is a major city of what island nation? New Zealand. At Falmouth. New Zealand. That's the correct answer. What Latin American guerrilla leader became regarded as a leftist martyr after he was executed? Yes, that was just in time. Che Guevara. That's the right answer. And that is the end of this round. Okay, Falmouth has 220 points and Brewer has 140. We've got a game, folks. This is a good one. All right, our category round is coming up next. Stay with us. Trees are down. The power is down. But you're not powerless. The mobile app from Safety Insurance can help you file a claim. You can ask an independent agent about safety insurance. 
we'll help you manage life's storms. Next up is the category round with the following choices. From the top, The Elegant Universe, I Like Ike, Who's On First, Madam I'm Adam, and Kids Lit. Each category has five questions with increasing point values. Now players, you can confer with your teammates, but once you buzz in, you can no longer confer and we will need your answer. And like in the toss-up round, if one team answers incorrectly, the other team will be given the chance to answer. So Brewer, you're a little bit behind, so you get to choose first. What category would you like? Uh, we'll go with the Elegant Universe for 10. All right, the Elegant Universe. This is questions about astronomy, and this is for 10 points. What five-letter word designates planets that are smaller than Mercury, such as Ceres and Pluto? Lana. Dwarf. That's correct, and you still have control of the board. Uh, kids Lit for 10. Kids Lit for 10. This is a new category. Questions about children's literature. What best friend of Winnie the Pooh is named after author A.A. A. Milne's son? Andrew. Christopher Robin. That's the right answer. And you still have control? Where would you like to go? Um, kids Lit 15. All right, we're going to continue with Kids Lit. This is for 15 points. Name the legendary Greek author of fables such as The Fox and the Grapes. Ryan. Aesop. That's the right answer. And what's your choice? Uh, we'll go with I Like Ike for 10. I Like Ike, a new category. Questions about Dwight D. Eisenhower. This is for 10 points. Eisenhower's mother, a pacifist, was reduced to tears when he decided to enter what military academy in 1911? Ryan. West Point. That's the answer. What would you like next? Kids Lit for 20. All right, go back to Kids Lit for 20 points. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. This quote is from what 1963 book by Maurice Sendak. <phone rings> Carrie. Where the wild things are. That's, that's the answer. And Falmouth, you have control of the board now. Could we do kids lit, please? We sure can for 25 points. What Canadian maritime province is the setting for Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery? <phone rings> ben. Prince Edward Island. That's the answer. And Falmouth, you remain in control of the board. Uh, can I do... I like Ike for 15. You sure can. I like Ike for 15 points. In what year did Eisenhower give the order to launch the largest amphibious attack in history? Uh, Ryan? 1944. That's correct. And Brewer, you have control of the board. All right, it's going to wrap up this category. Kids lit for 30 points. Mrs. What's It, Mrs. Who, and Mrs. Winch are introduced in what award winning science fiction novel by Madeline Langle? Kerry. A Wrinkle in Time. That's right. And Falmouth, where would you Let's like to go? go? I like Ike for 20, please. I like Ike for 20 points. In September 1957, Eisenhower sent federal troops to protect nine African American students and enforce integration at a school in what southern city? Ryan. Little Rock, Arkansas. Yes, that is the answer. And Brewer, you're in control of the board. We'll go with the Elegant Universe for 15. The Elegant Universe, this is for 15 points. Lying between Pisces and Taurus, what constellation in the northern sky is Latin for ram? <phone rings> Kerry. Aries. That's right. Falmouth, you have control of the board. Let's go Madam I'm Adam for 10, please. Madam I'm Adam, this is a new category. Questions about famous people named Adam, and this question is for 10 points. What Maroon 5 frontman is a coach on the reality show The Voice? <phone rings> Ryan. Adam Levine. That's right, and Brewer, it's back to you. We'll go with the Elegant Universe for 20. Elegant Universe for 20 points. In the 1920s, what American astronomer discovered the Andromeda Nebula was actually a galaxy? Ryan. Edwin Hubble. That's right. Uh, same category. All right. Elegant Universe for 25 points. Named after a Dutch astronomer, what giant spherical cloud of trillions of comets surrounds our solar system? Andrew. The Oort Cloud. That's right. Where would you like to go, Brewer? Uh, elegant Universe. All right, we're going to wrap up this category, the Elegant Universe, for 30 points. The constellation Scorpius contains what bright red star known as the Scorpion's Eye or the Scorpion's Heart? <coughs> it's Atares is the answer. And Brewer, you still have control. Uh, from the top for 10. From the top for 10 points. These are questions about mountains. What European country is home to famous alpine peaks like the Eiger and the Jungfra and the Matterhorn? Ben. Switzerland. That's right. Falmouth, you have control of the board. Uh, from the top for 15. From the top for 15 points. What mountain range is the source of the Amazon River and most of its tributaries? 
Ryan. The Andes. That's correct. Brewer? Uh, from the top for 20. All right. From the top, 20 points. Located between the Black and Caspian Seas, what mountains dominate the landscape of Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Georgia? Kerry. The Caucasus Mountains. That's correct. And found in a tennis match here. Falmouth, we're back to you. Okay, let's do from the top for 25, please. Okay, from the top, this is for 25 points. Used for centuries as a gateway to invasions, what historic mountain pass between Afghanistan and Pakistan did Rudyard Kipling call a sword cut through the mountains? Ben. The Khyber Pass. That's correct. Falmouth, where are we going? Uh, from the top for 30. All right, we're going to wrap up this category from the top for 30 points. In 1805, the Lewis and Clark expedition barely survived crossing what mountain range that extends 300 miles along the border of Idaho and Montana? Emma. The Sierra Nevada. That is incorrect. Brewer, I'll give it a shot. Lana. The Rocky Mountain. That's, it's the Bitterroot Mountains is the answer to that question. And Falmouth, you still remain in control of the board. Uh, who's on first for 10? All right, we have a new category here. Who's on first? Questions about baseball, and this is for 10 points. In American League Baseball, what player in the batting order hits in place of the pitcher and does not play defense? Ben. Designated hitter. That's correct. Falmouth? Uh, I like Ike for 25. I like Ike for 25 points. In both 1952 and 1956, Eisenhower won in a landslide against what Democratic candidate for president? Emma. Dewey. That is incorrect. Brewer, you want to give it a shot? Adlai Stevenson is the answer. Falmouth, you still have control of the board. Uh, Madam, I'm Adam for 15. Okay, Madam, I'm Adam for 15 points. What star of Happy Gilmore and the Waterboy once joked, I'm not particularly talented and I'm not particularly good looking and yet I'm a multimillionaire? <laughs> Emma. And I'm Sandberg. That's incorrect. Brewer. Adams. Yeah. Ryan? Adam Sandler. Yes, that's the answer. Brewer, you have control of the board? Uh, we'll go with who's on first for 15. All right, who's on first for 15. What Hall of Fame catcher and manager is known for memorable sayings like, it's deja vu all over again and it ain't over till it's over? Ryan. Yogi Berra. That's correct. Where would you like to go next? Uh, same category. All right, who's on first? This is for 20 points. In 2016, what team ended the longest world championship drought in North American professional sports history? <laughs> Ryan. The Chicago Cubs. That's correct. Okay, Brewer, you still have control of the board. We'll go with I Like Ike for 30. All right, this wraps up this category. I Like Ike for 30 points. Eisenhower was the first term limited president in accordance with what constitutional amendment? Ryan. The 22nd. That's correct. And Brewer, you still have control? Uh, who's on first for 25? Who's on first for 25 points. Once described by Ted Williams as the best pitch in baseball, what pitch breaks nearly as much as a curveball and is nearly as fast as a fastball? Ryan. A knuckleball. That is incorrect. Falmouth, you want to give it a shot? Ben. Breaking ball. It's a slider is the answer to that one. And that is the buzzer. So that ends our category round. We have a game. I knew we had a game. Falmouth has 280 points. Brewer with 315. The final round is coming up next. But first, let's check out the answers to the Maine's Credit Union's question of the week. Hi, I'm Jake Holmes from Maine's Credit Unions. We'll go back to high school quiz show Maine in a moment. But first, let's see how you did with the question of the week. Several US coins have ridges around their edges. How many ridges does the edge of a quarter have? Is it zero? 75 or 119? The answer is 119. These ridges, or reeds as they are officially called, have been used since 1792 to not only thwart counterfeiters, but to prevent clipping where ridgeless coins could have tiny bits of the precious metal shaved off. The shavings could be collected and sold. Now ridges help visually impaired people identify different coins of similar size. Okay, we are heading into the final 90 seconds of gameplay. This is where anything can happen. This is the lightning round. Players, you get 20 points for correct answers. Incorrect answers, though, will cost you 20 points. So let's set that clock and let's go. In lowest terms, the fraction 1 8 is expressed as what decimal? Ben. Uh, 0 0.125. Correct. What American lawyer and amateur poet wrote the lyrics to the Star Spangled Banner? Lana. Francis Scott Key. Correct. City of Oshkosh lies on the western shore of Lake Winnebago in what U.S. state? Wade. Wisconsin. Correct. 
What 1953 title is the first of Ian Fleming's 12 James Bond novels? Ryan. Dr. No. That is incorrect. It's Casino Royale. How many cups are in one U.S. gallon? Emma. 16. Correct. What Spanish surrealist is best known for his painting of melting clocks? Ryan. Salvador Dali. That's correct. What legendary lost island is described in two dialogues by Plato? Kerry. Atlanta. Correct. From the Greek meaning pointedly foolish, what literary term is defined as the joining of two contradictory words as in deafening silence? Lana. Oxymoron. That's right. The White Nile and what other branch are the two main branches of the Nile River? Blue Ryan. Nile. Careful, Ryan. Averaging over 600 days, what has the longest gestation period of any mammal? Ben. Elephant. That's correct. The five highest peaks in New England are all located in what state, Ben? New Hampshire. That's correct. What Italian composer wrote the opera Madame Butterfly? Puccini is the answer. Who led his country's communist revolution and became chairman of the People's Republic of China in 19... Ben. Mao. That's the right answer. And the novel, and that is the buzzer. And our winning team this week is Falmouth with 420 points. They will be moving on to the quarterfinals in a few weeks. Our runner-up Brewer High School had a great game. They certainly did. And your first year here, I hope you guys will come back. Both teams, wow, this was just a fast-moving, incredible game. So congratulations to both of you. And be sure to tune in next week as Portland High School takes on Gould Academy right here on High School Quiz Show Maine. <laughs> Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by the Helen and George Ladd Charitable Corporation, the Lincoln and Therese Filene Foundation, Plots Associates, Bernstein Schur, and by Every day, Maine credit unions give you a new chance to make your money go further so you get ahead faster. Because with a credit union, you own a piece of the pie. Contact your local Maine credit union. It's your moment. Own it. Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility, part of your community. With Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, you get more than a health plan. You get a partner. With benefits built around local needs, they're helping communities across Maine get healthier and happier. Visit harvardpilgrim.org to learn more. And by viewers like you. Thank you.